Dot Harry's claim of being a helpless Frogmore victim is disproven. The reason behind the Sussex's forceful removal is revealed in the recently published annual report on royal expenditures. One particular detail regarding Harry's major complaint has raised concerns. Greetings and a warm welcome to VIP News YouTube channel. Harry asserts that he is essentially a mere organ donor, a genetic contingency plan, always designated the smaller sausage in the smaller bedroom, the subject of insensitive jokes, destined to be the backup. All of this stems from Harry's self-conducted psychological exploration, which he named Spare. According to him, being the spare equates to suffering, forever playing second fiddle in a lifelong race in which he had no say. And according to Harry, this also extended to the allocation of residences. He was left to reside in an embarrassing cottage on the Kensington Palace grounds, while William, Catherine, and their children enjoyed an incredible abode akin to a museum. Well, it all sounds quite dreadful, doesn't it? Except for one thing. The annual Sovereign Grant report has been released and the accompanying briefings provided to journalists have dealt a blow to Harry's continuous self-pity. The release of the Grant Report last week served as a reminder that for the past four years, a large palace apartment, just as grand as Williams, has remained unoccupied, a property that could have easily been Harry and Meghan's home had they chosen to stay in the UK. So, who feels sorry for Harry now? In Harry's book, Spare, he attempts to substantiate his claim of always being treated as lesser throughout his life. One aspect he highlights is the issue of real estate, specifically the free accommodations provided to members of the royal family. When Meghan first visited him in 2016, he resided in Nottingham Cottage on the palace grounds. Harry described the place when he invited Meghan over, saying, I was excited to welcome Meg to my home, but also embarrassed. Nottingham Cottage was no palace, merely adjacent to one. That was the best that could be said about it. Thankfully, Meghan showed no signs of dismay or disillusionment. Now, let's compare that to when Meghan and Harry visited the current Prince and Princess of Wales in their lavish 20-room palace apartment, which underwent renovations costing approximately $7.6 million, courtesy of the grant. I know your hearts are breaking for Harry and Meghan, just imagine the horror, a man in his thirties and his successful, until recently, employed wife forced to purchase furniture from the Swedish retailer IKEA, or pay for their own sofa. Oh my! Supposedly, there was and still is an equally large apartment, next to William and Catherine's, that could have been Harry and Meghan's if they had desired it. I'm sorry, but that does not support Harry's perpetual claim of being treated as second best. According to Royal Editor Richard Palmer from The Express, this week's accounting of grants has revealed that the 21-room apartment, formerly occupied by the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester for over 40 years, remains vacant. So this week's reporting serves as a great reminder that the tiny Nottingham cottage, with its lamps and its furnishings funded by Meghan's acting career, was always meant to be a temporary residence for them. Meghan and Harry were never destined to spend their royal careers crammed into this small 17th-century dwelling. Instead, in 2018, it was reported that the Gloucester couple would vacate their long-term residence to accommodate the Sussexes due to their higher rank at the time. The Gloucesters had already spent $2.6 million on repairing the apartment's roof, replacing windows, and removing asbestos. However, this plan came to an abrupt halt when Harry and Meghan decided that they didn't want to live in London, and instead opted for Frogmore Cottage on the Windsor Estate. So, this cast doubt on the whole story of Meghan and Harry struggling with their discounted sofa. The reporting from The Express reminds us that when it comes to housing, there wasn't a significant disparity in how the two brothers were treated. If they had wanted it, Meghan and Harry could have had an apartment similar to the one occupied by the Waleses, had they chosen to do so. Harry is a man determined to prove himself right, and he even acknowledges this in spare. He wrote that living in Nottingham Cottage had become so unbearable that one day he had to call his grandmother, the Queen of England, and ask for a new place to live. Imagine making such a request for a free home. But anyway, Harry continues by saying, I informed her that we had discussed our housing situation with the palace and had been offered several properties, but we deemed each one too grand too extravagant, and too expensive to renovate. 
To be fair, it's hard to say that Harry is consistent. He's like a modern-day Goldilocks. On one hand, he complained about their home being too small, but then he claimed the alternative options were too extravagant and costly to renovate, even though the grant would have covered their expenses instead of their own pockets. So, what the grant report truly reminds us of is that Harry and Meghan were provided with almost everything on a silver platter, handed to them by palace staff. Yet, they still insist on portraying themselves as victims. It's worth noting that since the Gloucesters vacated the property, nobody has actually taken possession of it, and it still requires significant work before it can be lived in. However, considering that millions from the grant were used for the Wales's apartment, we can reasonably assume that the necessary funds would have been made available to Harry and Meghan to renovate the place. Regardless of their positions as the heir and the spare, all the late Queen's children were bestowed with beautiful homes of their own. There's no reason to believe that the same wouldn't have been true for William and Harry. Perhaps William would have received more expensive artwork than Harry, but in the end, does that really matter? Interestingly, it's not only Harry who appears indecisive based on the Grant report. King Charles has long advocated for environmental causes, which is commendable. His Aston Martin, for instance, runs on eco-friendly fuel derived from cheese and wine. However, recent news reveals that he has lowered the temperature of the palace's indoor pool to the point where anyone contemplating a swim may suffer from frostbite. Moreover, according to the reports, his Majesty decided to reduce energy consumption in all royal properties by setting thermostats to a chilly 19 degrees. It's supposed to set an example for all of us to follow, right? Well, here's the catch. The report also discloses that the working members of the Windsor family took 179 helicopter trips, 65 chartered flights, and numerous rides on the royal train. If we crunch the numbers, that's nearly four helicopter trips per week and over one private flight per week. It seems that the hypocritical trait Harry is often criticized for may have been passed down to him. And in this regard, father and son find common ground. They both strive to make points but end up contradicting their own arguments. In his book, Spare, Harry tries his best to portray himself as a victim of unfair treatment, but at the same time, he could have had a 21-room apartment in Kensington Palace. Meanwhile, Charles cruises the back roads of Gloucestershire, in his cheese-fueled car, apparently cautious of hedgehogs. However, behind the scenes, helicopters are being used by the palace as if there's no tomorrow.